Oh look, a deer left me a half-eaten tomato. I think I'll return the favor this fall. I'll shoot the deer, cut off one back strap, two legs, and just leave the rest of them in the woods. Hey guys, welcome to the homestead. So today we're gonna to be out in the garden. We have a lot of beans to harvest. I have a bunch of pinto beans. Me and my youngest son are gonna be out here today working hard to get all of those in. Um, and um, I'm just dealing with some more deer pest pressures. You know, I, I've said often, you know, having a garden is like a battlefield. You're gonna constantly do battle. Your enemies now are aphids, beetles, pest pressures, all kinds of uh, mammal pest pressures. You have diseases, fungus, biochemical warfare you have to deal with it's like going into battle and chances are you're probably not going to make it out <laughs> alive <laughs> so anyway uh, i wanted to go ahead and ask uh, uh answer a question i got from yeti mama uh the other day on a video and i think it's kind of time sensitive uh, because they just moved out of the city and onto five acres and they have some garden questions and so we'll go ahead and address this real quick it says zach i just moved out of the city and onto five acres the garden was left in disarray and likely needs to be reclaimed by tilling. Any smarter ways? It's currently overgrown by sticker burrs. Okay, the first thing you need to understand is that the sticker burrs, the only way to prevent those from coming up the next year is to, as carefully as you can, pick those plants out by hand, put some gloves on, and pick those plants up and then take them away and put them in a pile and burn them. Um, if you just destroy the plants and then you can also destroy the plants and then you know plant over them by putting lots of comp but your problem is you're going to be for that first year pulling up those plants from all those seeds that have sprouted and um, it's just going to be a pain in the butt but you can do it you know eventually if you, if you stay meticulous if you stay on it and pick all those new starts up for the, for the following year you will get rid of those weeds um, an easier way again is just to take the time carefully remove the plants by hand and then burn them. Um, as far as soil, the soil that we have here in the Ozarks is rocky, clay, hard, red dirt. Okay, and you can make that pliable and soft and supple and uh, my, have, having lots of microbial activity, but you gotta do a few things. Um, the first year we were here, I tilled up this soil just to get it broken up, just to get oxygen and water down into it. I have since learned you don't even have to do that. I recommend it. That's fine. If you have a tiller and you want to have a plot, if you want to till it up just to break it up, just to get that moisture and that initial moisture and that oxygen into the soil, that's fine. However, you don't need to do that. What you can do instead is to put down lots of organic material, layer that down really super thick. I mean, you can go out and get a whole bale of hay and put that down, just unravel that bale of hay in, you know, like one of those large round bales and just, you know, back and forth across where you're gonna be gardening, um, put that bale of hay around real thick. And then on top of that hay, put down rabbit manure, especially rabbit manure. Rabbit manure is probably the best manure you can ever put on your garden. It, it's not, it's never hot. It's never gonna burn your plants. And you can, that will actually go ahead and put in tons of nutrients into the garden. And you can have a great first year garden with just rabbit manure. A lot of people will say you can't have a first year garden. It's gonna take you a couple years to amend your soil. And that's true. If you put rabbit manure, it's not true, okay? So you can put all kinds of different manures. And some manures are gonna have seed problems. Uh, some manures are not hot enough to kill the seed that the animal's been eating. So you're gonna have weed problems. And you can have a weed barrier like we have. Um, just make sure you get the polypropylene type weed barriers um, and uh, get, get, the, um, get the large stakes, the 10 inch stakes. Don't buy the six inch stakes because the six inches can pull out very easily during wind. And sometimes in the summertime, we get these pop-up thunderstorms and that wind can really carry that out. So your best bet is to go ahead and put as many layered things on your garden that first year. And then what you wanna do, especially also, um, let me mention coffee grounds. Coffee grounds are gonna provide a food source for the thing that's gonna aerate your garden and that is worms. Even on Amazon right now, you can buy, uh, I think it's called, uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, Bob's Red Wiggler Worms or whatever it is. 
If you can get red wiggler worms on Amazon or some of these other places, I, I know he's got his own website. We did that. We bought like 5,000 worms, or maybe we bought like two packs of 5,000 worms each. And we put that on the soil like our first, I think our second year. And um, they just went to town because we were do at the time doing back to Eden Gardens. And all of these things we were layering, lasagna layering on top of the garden were breaking down and the worms just went nuts. And what really sent them into overdrive, and you can find lots of research about this online, is to put coffee grounds on your garden. And those coffee grounds, I mean, who doesn't like coffee? <laughs> I know there's a few of you out there who don't like coffee, but the worms love coffee. And what that does, it sends them into overdrive, they work harder, and they reproduce harder. And so you're going to have lots of worms by putting that coffee. And so what we did, we went into town and uh, there was a coffee shop in the town square. And I gave them a bucket and, and I set aside two buckets. And every week I would go there and get their bucket and I would switch it out with another bucket and they would fill that bucket up. And I would bring that bucket of coffee grounds home, including the filters. I said, just leave the filters in. And I put those filters because most of the filters are paper. You know, if they're, if they're using some other weird filter, then don't use that. But they were just using a, a paper filter and I just put that on the ground and the worms just went nuts and ate it all up. They ate the coffee grounds, they ate the paper filters, and it was it was just, they did a phenomenal job of leaving all of their worm casting, something that you pay a high dollar for over at those organic stores. And it just sent my, my garden into overdrive, and I had a really good first year and second year garden because I had the rabbit manure, I put the worms into overdrive, I gave them lots of composting materials like wood chips and straw and, and rice hulls and, and hay even, and of course, animal manures in the form of rabbit manure, they just went nuts. And so if you have a garden, it's your first year garden and it's hard and it's rocky, you can leave all the rocks in there. I mean, unless they're like giant big rocks, you need to move those out. But you can put some, you can put some really good rabbit manure and some other manures and some compost and some things to break down and put those worms on there with the coffee grounds and they will move through that soil and aerate that soil and they will bring biodiversity and all kind, introduce all kinds of amazing microbes into that soil that you can grow just about anything. So um, that, that would be my, that would be my, that's what I tell everyone. If you need a soil if, or if you need a garden and you need to redo that soil, that's how you amend your soil uh, to get a great first year. But see, if you come out here and a lot of people get frustrated in the Ozarks because they come out and they want to do a garden and they don't do those things. You know, their red, their red clay just remains red clay and it's hard and it's rocky. And, you know, and, and again, I, I've said in many videos, your garden, when you walk on it, needs to feel like a waterbed. It needs to feel like you, you should be able to feel the give underneath your footsteps as you walk across your garden. And if your garden's not like that, then it's because your garden is not aerated. Why is your garden, you, you know, they buy these aerator machines and you can buy these shoes to walk in, you know, to... You can do all that, but why not have all that working for you even when you're sleeping by introducing worms and giving them lots to eat and they will aerate your garden for you. So that's that's my advice to you guys is to go ahead and if you're going to get a garden, if you're in, you're in a place where it's rocky and hard clay to make all those things work for you, give it plenty of nutrients. And then every year you realize you're pulling all of this stuff out of your garden pounds and pounds and pounds of produce that all has to be replaced and so every year you take the things that you create on your homestead like i have enough sheep where it produces enough manure i can go with my tractor bucket and just bucket that up and dump it here and then spread it with a rake and that's all those pounds of nutrients being added back in the soil and then i add it back in you know i i, I just got in an argument on my last video in the comment section about a guy who was like oh if you want to add calcium you don't need eggshells you can just use wood ash well, wood ash only provides about 20% calcium, and eggshells are about 90% calcium, over 90%. And I'm not saying one is better than the other. All I'm saying is that take these things from different sources. I use wood ash and I use eggshells because you're using different sources, and all of those sources are going to have different micronutrients and different compounds that's going to add biodiversity to your garden, and it's going to allow the microbes and the worms and all the things to feed on stuff and it's just going to provide a, a, a more diverse, you know, climate under, un, under the soil. So the thing is you got to keep in mind is to work on it. 
you got to make sure you're out there working on it and you got to make sure you're putting in the time because you can look at a garden and be like, okay, someone's not putting in the time. The garden is suffering. And then you look at a garden and you're like, wow, someone's really putting in the time. I think I was just watching this morning, Living Traditions Homestead. They always have great videos. And, you know, they were like, well, you know, our garden doesn't look perfect this year because we had so many things. There was an illness. And I, th I think, um, um, you know, it was just different things that came up in, in their family or on their homestead that didn't allow them to put in the time. But really, their garden looks amazing. It's like they still put in a lot of time <laughs> on their garden. It doesn't look as pristine as maybe, you know, they have in the past, but it's still producing and it still looks great. And it, you really look at someone's garden and you can tell, okay, are they putting in the time? So, um, you know, I wish I had more time, but there's still things. I'm a web designer by trade. And I do websites for clients and um, I still have some of that stuff going on and I have other things going on. I have speaking events coming up and I have all, all things I'm doing and all, you know, I'm, I'm a homeschool dad. So it's like, I'm, I'm doing that too. So all these things take time. But just putting in a little bit of time consistently, you'll have an amazing garden that will produce food for your family. So I hope Yeti Mama, I hope that answered your question um, uh, that you came. I hope you can, you, you can till or you can not till. It's up to you. Uh, but if you do the things I mentioned in the video, your garden is going to be great and you're going to be able to grow some amazing produce. All right, guys. Hey, leave a comment below. Let me know what you're doing about your garden. Hey, if you're getting different, if you have a source that I maybe have not mentioned of something that you put on your garden, leave a comment below. If you've had successes in your garden using certain things, please leave a comment below. One of the biggest things I always talk about too is all is fish fertilizer. You can buy organic fish fertilizer even at Walmart. And that's an amazing amendment you can put on your garden or on your plants. So if you have something you want to mention, leave it in the comments below. Your comment may help some other future gardener who's looking for ideas. So, and if you have failures, leave those down below too. We always want to be able to share our failures. No one's perfect. And there are things that we're going to try that just don't work out well. So, all right, guys, check out our merchandise, teespring.com. Can you see my shirt? It says Farm Fresh Butt Nuggets. <laughs> you can buy that at teespring.com. Link in the description below. And of course, our best selling shirt, Stupid Should Hurt. If we had more hurt in this world, there'd be an awful lot less stupid. I think we can all admit there's a lot of stupid right now. <laughs> and the reason there's so much stupid is because it doesn't hurt. <laughs> you can find that shirt down linked in the description below. All right, guys. See you next time in the homestead. Bye. It's 2023, and the banks are continuing to struggle and fail. The bottom line on why our country is in so much financial trouble is that we have for years not lived within our means. Government spending in Congress is out of control, and government printing of U.S. dollars has reached no limits. For only the second time in history, we have more debt than our GDP. That means we owe more money than our country is actually worth. See, it used to be said that the US dollar was backed by the gross domestic product. But when the debt exceeds that amount, it's no wonder why so many countries are now refusing to trade in that ever increasingly worthless currency. That's why you need to safeguard your wealth. You've worked and saved your entire life and now it's all at risk. Genesis Gold Group is a faith-based business that will help you move your assets into physical gold and silver. Precious metals have stood the test of time during economic failures all throughout history. Call Genesis Gold Group today and let them develop a strategy for your savings, 401k, or self-directed IRA. A strategy of physical gold and silver. You can call the number on the screen or visit them at genesisgoldgroup.com and be sure to say you heard about them from an American homestead. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. Oh wait. <laughs>